welcome to what's going to be a short series of videos that I'm going to do to make your life a little bit harder. Instead of facing AI, which is easy to kill, I'm going to show a few little tips on making them a little bit tougher. Most, but not all of these videos will cover uh, defences. And in this first video, I'm going to start with a little trick to make air defences a lot less susceptible to anti-radiation missiles. So, let's start. Okay, I'm on board in this F-16 and I have a pair of harm missiles and the harm targeting system. And up ahead we can see an SA-6 straight flush radar. So I'm going to lock him up and try and take him out. Okay, missiles away and we should expect a good kill. So let's turn to safety and watch the missile fly in. I've skipped forward about 50 seconds and the missile seems good, but watch what's about to happen. The missile's completely changed direction as this SA-6 site has two straight flush radars and each is set to operate for just under a minute and then we'll switch to the alternate. So let's skip forward again. And there is a second change of radar, but the missile hasn't changed direction because now the other radar is outside of the missile's scan azimuth. So it's going to continue blindly towards this radar. Let's just follow in for this last few seconds. And there we have a miss. So let's pop into the mission editor and see how we get this done. First of all, we have the two SA-6 radars and here they're separated by about five miles, which seems to work okay. You could have them closer or indeed further away, but you want enough separation to ensure that the last switch is outside of the scan zone. I've not set up any missiles here as I'll cover that in another video. We've also set up a zone, which I'll come to shortly, so let's now look at the triggers. Okay, this first trigger occurs at mission start and does two things. First of all, it sets flag one to on and disables one of the radars. And I've also put a message just so we can see what's happening in game. The second trigger happens 50 seconds after flag one unless flag three is active. Once triggered, it will turn on flag two and turn off flag one. It will also turn off the radar, which is currently on and turn on the other radar. The third trigger does exactly the opposite, getting us back to the original radar. The timing of 50 seconds seems to work pretty well with a five mile separation. But if your radars are closer or further apart, then you might want to play around with the timings. Too long and the radar might still be active, and too short and it might return to being active. But remember, this isn't intended to make the SAM immune to an attack, and its success will depend not only on the timing, but on the launch range and the altitude. Whilst this setup helps defend our search radars, if they fire and we swap radars, then their SA-6 missiles will also fail. So this trigger sets both radars to be permanently active, but only if any coalition aircraft flies into the zone which I mentioned earlier, which is set at a range from which intruders are unlikely to escape. It also sets flag 3, which disables the previous two triggers, stopping the switching. And as you don't want the missiles to be launched while switching, I've also set the group's interception range to roughly match the size of the engagement zone. So it only fires when inside that zone. 
The fifth trigger disables flag three to allow switching to resume if there are no aircraft in the kill zone. And finally, I have a trigger which is just activated once and this checks for damage or destruction of any of the two radars. So if they are damaged or destroyed, then switching stops courtesy of flag three and the remaining radars are set to active. You could obviously expand this with three or more radars, but you want to remain realistic and playable. And remember, the aim is to make life a little tougher and not impossible. So I wouldn't use more than two unless your primary mission is specifically to take out an integrated SAM defense network. I'd also point out that this principle can be applied to any multi-part SAM system, for example, SA2, 3, 10, or 11s. So that wraps this up. And if you learned anything, please hit like and do subscribe. Thank you.